Hey, what's happening? Um, I wanted to, this is not gonna be, I probably won't be a quick video just because um, I, I just, I just wanna like free flow with this thing. Um, yesterday I posted something on Facebook that people seem to respond well to, so I wanted to, um, I wanted to just go on and make a video about it because um, it's an important thing to me um, and I think maybe that, maybe somebody will find it helpful, a blessing if you, you know, uh, if you subscribe to Blessings, I know I do. Um, so, um, God, lost my train of thought. So anyway, I'm just going to kind of flow with it. I've wanted to tell the story for quite some time. Wanted to, you know, outline and make it all pretty or whatever. Bump that. I just want to tell the story. So, um, I'm going to, you know, go back to the beginning. Uh, first off, I, you know, let's use bass as the vehicle because, you know, if you're here, you're watching my channel you know, I'm a bass player and most people come to my channel for bass videos. Um, you know, I grew up in the so-called inner city. If anybody's familiar with the show Treme, I grew up in the Treme area of New Orleans and uh, kind of, you know, fell into this fallacy that um, if I lived long enough, if I didn't get incarcerated or whatever, the best that I would do was have a job, you know, a job, just working, you know, at a at a warehouse or something like that, and or doing some sort sort of manual labor. And I can tell you, my all of my twenties, that's what I did. I worked manual labor jobs, and you know, to me in my mind, the come up was when I would get the chance to go and work a job where I could wear a collared shirt, you know, that so called corporate America job. Well. At the age of 30, I, f I got that job, kind of, you know, fell into this, this job working at a call center uh, for a large office supplier. Um, and I thought that was it. Now, I've always been a musician, a musician. I'm going to show you why I use that, you know, air quotes. I've always played, um, up to that point, I always played an instrument. I played bass since I was 13 years old. Um, so that was a constant in my life, but I wasn't nearly as serious about it as I thought I was. You know, I had some, some natural ability or whatever, but, um, you know, it was only getting me so far. And there were situations that were cropping up where I was, I was starting, you know, the, the holes in my playing and the holes in my knowledge were becoming very, very obvious. So, but, but let me back up to this whole job thing. So I'm in this job for like three years and... I hate it. I mean, I absolutely hate it. I don't use the word hate lightly. I hated it. Um, and I disliked many of the people that I worked with. Not to, you know, not to uh, even talk about the commute, the time that I was spending going to this job. Um, I did, however, have a, you know, a supervisor who I now call a friend. Um, I called her a friend then. I call her a friend now. Um, who, who told me one day, she was like, you, you don't need to be here, you know, won't you just go like work in a record store or something? I was like, you know, I, th I was, I thought it's like, I, I had this job, you know, to pay my bills or whatever, whatever. So I remember she gave me a book, um, a book called, uh, it was a book, the song, I Hope You Dance as performed by Leanne Womack, Womack, Leanne Womack. And, um, it had a little booklet with it, and and it kind of makes me a little bit emotional sometimes when I think about it, when I hear the song or whatever, because that was such a turning point. Now, look, uh, even you know, you might know I'm a huge Prince fan. Prince said, you know, you're either here to encourage or discourage. So this this little thing that she did that uh, that and really encouraged me to to get out of this position. But what was I gonna do? A year earlier, a buddy of mine said to me, he said, you know, he was working corporate America and he had, you know, just got, it was a time where the economy was just nuts, you know, and he was just like, man, I'm going to open a window cleaning business. And I was like, you tripping. So a year later, fast forward to when I have this book and, and I'm, you know, just kind of being led to, to give this up and kind of step out on a limb. Um, I said, hey, man, can you can you hook, hook me up and let me come work with you? And so that's what I did. Now, at that time, um, around this time, I'm going back and forth to New York with a singer um, doing a lot of showcasing and stuff like that. And 
what was happening was I was putting myself in, a, you know, like I said, I had some natural ability on base. So it, maybe subconsciously I was surrounding myself in situations and around people that would tell me, oh, you good, you know, and not really, you know, shy away from situations where the, the light was shined on, you know, how I wasn't as good as I thought I was. Now, so I, I you know, there's that. I wanted to get better as a musician, but I wanted to do something with my life, you know. So... Um, first thing, I, you know, I said, well, you know, bass is the thing I do, so let me find a teacher. And I couldn't find a teacher that I gelled with in my area. And, you know, sometimes, you, and you may be familiar with this, when you don't know what you don't know, you just know that you need to know more than you know, um, it's hard to get started. So I stumbled and fell on this junior college, junior college or community college. Um, I said, I'm going to go there. They have a music program. They're bound to have a bass teacher. So I get there, they don't have a bass teacher. And on top of that, their program uh, didn't recognize electric bass, but I wanted some kind of degree. I wanted to finish something in my life. I wanted to accomplish something. I mean, I had done a lot of stuff, you know, stuff, but I had not, um, I had not finished anything in my life, you know, up until that point. So, Anyway, they yeah, check out an upright bass. Now, I'm from New Orleans, but I had never even touched an upright bass, and jazz was not my thing. There was two programs there. There was the jazz program, and there was the symphonic band program. And, you know, at this time now, I'm 30, right? I'm a, I'm a full-grown adult. You know, this whole school thing is supposedly something that you do when you're a kid, right? So... I'm in this program, and let me bag up. You have to, in order to get a certificate in music from this from this institution, you have to play. In order to get lessons, you have to play in an ensemble, right? In order to get a degree, you have to re meet certain requirements if you wanted to get a degree in music. So um, I can remember being in the band with people that are fresh out of high school, you know, kids, right? And then some of them I'm going to call out. And I'm gonna call, I got to call them by name because they're so important uh, to me. And I'm standing there with this instrument I've never played before, um, and I can't read, right? So there's another thing. Um, now, I had read music. I'd played in, you know, band and stuff when I was in elementary school. So I think the last time I had read anything was... was uh, in sixth grade and that was treble clef and you know if so i was familiar i wasn't ignorant to to the concept you know, you know what i mean but if you met a grown man now that only read on the sixth grade level you would probably say that they couldn't read so that's where i was you know i've got you know people like I'm, i gotta call these people out tyler zupo chris uh christina jepp uh steven turner just you know there's a bunch of Tris Coffin, Sarah Pena, oh, you know, standing behind me. I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't mean to put y'all on the spot like that, but I have to call your name because you're such a blessing. You were such a blessing in my life. Um, but having Tyler stand behind me as I try to fumble around with this instrument that I don't know how to play, counting out bars. Now, let me let me back up even more. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna make a long story even longer. At this time, I've played countless gigs. I've been on the road. You know what I'm saying? I've traveled places on other people's dime playing music, you know? Uh, so this is humbling. This is really, really humbling at the time. Also at the time, I'm meeting the girl that would, the woman that would become my wife. Um, and so I, you know, I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm determined to, to get this thing. Let me just sidestep right there. Some of you fellas are, you know, y'all looking at them Instagram accounts and them chicks look good on their Instagram and their Facebook, but they're not going to support you. So I'm not saying that my wife ain't fly because she's fly. I'm just saying that, you know, um, at the time I was actually kind of struggling with some with some stuff. And I'm like, you know, hey, this girl is like really in my corner. So anyway, I bring this upright bass home, but, uh, you know, and when I say home, I say, you know, to her house, to my cousin's house. One thing I left out is I had given up the apartment that I that I had lived in for many years while I was working, right? 
I just was, you know, I was like having an early midlife crisis is what I was having. So, you know, but, you know, an adult with a with an upright base that they can't play is like, you know, that's like uh, like having a child with a very, very large violin. So anyway, I looked at that. I looked at those that, you know, I found I looked at any piece of music that I could get and uh, I just said, you know, I'm going I'm to conquer this one beat, one bar. Um, at a time, then I'm gonna add another measure and blah blah blah. You know, so I, I, you know, there's there's other pieces of this that I want that I feel are more important than the whole reading music piece. I'll make another video about that some other time. But when I'm going through this process, I'm starting to subconsciously learn things that I'd never learned before. I was learning how to learn. Um, not only was I learning how to learn, I was learning how to teach. And I was going through these processes and meeting people, talking to people, having different ideas um, that were inspiring me in different ways. And so one of the things that, that, that was, another thing that was really um, important to me was um, learning how to navigate through things. You know, I'm, a, I'm an only child. I wouldn't say I have only child syndrome, but I'm all, I've been a very strong-headed person my whole life. Some people would say stubborn or some other stuff, but I've always been that guy. You know what I mean? So when I was in a situation where I didn't like it, I ran or I quit, okay? I can't believe I just admitted that on a video that I'm going to put out into the world, but you may be like I was. Um, but that's what I did. I don't like the situation. I'm not going to be in it. But here I was, I'm like, I done told people I'm going to school. I said I'm going to school. Come hell or high water, I'm going to do this. But if you've been through any type of institutional learning, you know that to get that thing, right? I'm looking at this thing over there, and but I got to navigate through all this other stuff. I got to navigate through a three-hour geography class. Three-hour geography, for real? I got to navigate through that. I got to, you know, I got to take math, which I suck at, okay? And math was a, I mean, ask my wife. I mean, there was one particular math class I took over and over and over and over again because I was just like, ah, you know what I mean? But I was learning that, you know, it's not about what's right in front of me. It's what, here's the thing. There's the mountain, okay? I got to kind of navigate through this stuff to get to the mountain. Anyway, I know I'm looking at the timer. We're at 12 minutes and 36 seconds. I ain't editing nothing. I'm just I'm rolling with this. So fast forward even further, I wind up at the time of two, a couple of big things happened at the time. Remember, I'm from New Orleans. So 2005, I had, I had given up my apartment because I wanted to regroup. I'd given up my job because I wanted to do something else. I figured if I settled for that, I was going to die there. You know what I mean? I just I was like, this can't be it, right? And I have to go back and reevaluate. I have to go back to this time in my life when I look at things now and say, hey, are you settling for things? What are you settling for? So during that time, I, qu I quit my job. I left my apartment because I wanted to save up some dough. So I'm staying at my cousin Zena's house, stacking paper. Katrina happens. Katrina happens. Not many people can say that they're in a position where like 98% of their family, for all intents and purposes, is homeless. So there I was with that. That happened in 2005. By God's good grace, I had stacked up enough paper that as soon as they opened up the city again, I was able to go and, and help my mom out, you know, kind of do survey the damage and stuff like that. Um, two years after that, I got married, Whew, big events, right? But my lady, I find, I said, man, this is somebody that's, she, she, she down the road, you know what I'm saying? So if she down the road, we, we going, we, we in this and we still in it, right? We're going on nine years now, nine years at the top of the month, September 1st. Anyway, so all this stuff is going on. And then I graduate in 2009, right? This is taking a long time because I still have to work. What am I doing for work? I still got to earn a living. I'm washing windows. I'm washing windows. I'm doing, uh, and I, you know, remember I had had this job that I thought was like the thing, right? So I 
kind of step back and like, damn, I'm doing manual labor again, which was another humbling thing. It's like you get, I'm getting broke down, broke down, broke down. So I'm rocking a squeegee, man. I'm rocking a squeegee. I'm cleaning residential homes. I'm cleaning commercial buildings, not not high rises, but I'm also doing gutters. I'm cleaning gutters, uh, just all manner of things. You know, Christmas time, I'm putting up people with Christmas lights. Uh, me and my buddy Brandon, my best friend, my homie, my brother, Brandon Shabazz, we, you know, we had a company called Service Wizards, right? And so then something happened. I graduated from Chabot in 2009 with a degree, with an AA degree in music. And I, I felt like that, you know, I, I was learning so much, I was like, uh, this isn't really enough. So I told my wife, I said, I said, hey, look, I don't know what the life was gonna look like, what life is gonna look like on the other side of a four year degree, but I gotta see. You know, I already know it's gotta be, you know, something in my mind was like, it's gotta be better than this. Now, excuse me, some of you anti education people may be like, I ah, degree ain't nothing. You don't need a degree, blah, 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 blah. I needed to go through this process. Somebody that's watching this video needs to go through this process, whether it be education or whether it be something else. You need to go through this process to, uh, I needed to go through the process of, of seeing a goal and completing the goal, right? So, um, again, it wasn't about, it, not necessarily, the, the paper has opened up some doors, but more uh, you know, more than that, you know, during that time, like right before I got married, I remember calling my friend, Kathy, from uh, from the place that I was working, who had encouraged me. I, I remember calling her because we were, you know, I'd also taken a night job working at another uh, call center. So I'm doing windows, you know, on the days when I'm not going to school. And then at night, because I was trying to save up some scratch to get married, um, I'm working at another call center at a, at a plumbing company that she was that she was managing she was like come on over here so and i called her one day i said i know what i want to be when i grow up again being a bass player being a musician was a constant but i felt like i needed to add on to something you know i needed something to do as a day job so i said you know i think i want to teach you know i don't think i would have i don't think i would have come to that realization i don't you know had i not been going through this process so uh I wind up going, I know this is getting long. We're at 17 minutes. I know it's getting long. Just hang in there with me. Um, so I go in to Cal State East Bay, you know, for, to get a four-year degree. And I walk in there, and I'm trying to make the, I'm trying to truncate this all, you know, this this whole story. But I really, I, I just wanted to share it on a, on a bigger level. Um, I'm walking in my first class was a counterpoint class, music theory uh, in the music theory series, counterpoint class. And I, all these old feelings start coming up. I'm not worthy. I'm not adequate. I'm not smart enough. All these people are younger than me. I'm just looking for, around for somebody that was older than me or old as me rather. And there were, but that, you know, I didn't see them when I first got there. So my knees are buckling and, and uh, you know, negative energy is, is saying, get up and walk out. Um, so I didn't the later on that day I had an orchestra rehearsal once again you know I've only been reading at this point for a couple of years right I've only been playing the upright bass for a couple of years and my heart wasn't all the way in the upright um, the teacher that I wound up getting at Chabot uh, a guy named Glenn Richmond fantastic guy uh, played bass for, for a long time with uh, Bobby Hutchison he told me one time, he said, you got to work your ass off to be a mediocre upright bass player. And I agree. Now, if anybody tells you, if you're a bass player watching this video and somebody tells you, well, upright is just like playing electric bass, just turn to the side. That is a lie. That's a pure, flat out lie. They're not the same instrument. They're in the same register. They are not the same instrument. So, um, where was I? Anyway, uh, you know, I'm just fighting through fear, fighting through fear, fighting through fear. Um, you know, I got recitals I got to do and blah, 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 blah. I'm going to cut, I'm gonna, you know, this is going to be a 30 minute video if I keep going. But I just, I don't say this to brag on myself. I'm sharing it because, again, you know, like my, you know, Prince is my hero, man, still to this day. Um, 
and there's one quote of his that just comes to mind all the time as you are here to either enlighten or discourage and so uh, I'm hoping that this video what I'm saying just kind of unedited out there is going to be a blessing for someone it's going to be an encouragement for someone whatever you're going through somebody sitting there right now wondering well how can I move to the next level how can I and I'm look I ain't no preacher I ain't no multi-level marketing dude I ain't, you know, I ain't none of that I'm a dude that just here's my story this is what I went through right um, and I still have to remind myself that song sometimes sometimes you have to okay I know you didn't come in for that but sometimes you have to encourage yourself so Sometimes when I look at the, I, I walk out my house and I see that degree is hanging on the, you know, it's hanging on the wall. It's a reminder. When I look at, you know, I've been, you know, I taught second through fifth grade. I've taught, taught thousands of school age children in, in the last five years. Now I teach middle and high school. And I feel like. I feel like I am blessing some of them. I'm encouraging some of them by way of my story. I have, I think my story is unique. I think your story is unique. And so sometimes we have to kind of navigate through some things so that we can be an encouragement for somebody else. So I, st I got rough days. You know, I got days when I wake up and I'm like, okay, uh, what now? And quite honestly, I still... You know, I still fight through, not fight through, but because I don't want to, because because I, you know, fighting means it's it's a it's a, a big a big adversary. Struggle with I'm gonna find a word and I'll share it with you at some other other time. But I deal with fear, you know, I deal with situations where I'm where I'm nervous or I'm you know I'm not sure. Um, but hey, man, you know. If you can't swim, you bound to drown. So, yes, we have 22 minutes now. This is a long. This is like the longest video I've ever, ever done. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just stop. I hope that I got my thoughts out like I wanted to. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. That's all I have to say about that. So anyway, be encouraged. Um, whatever you're doing, know that there's something on the other side of that. You know, keep your eye on that. If that's what you want, if that's, you know, and even if that's, if you're looking at that goal and that's what you think you want, but in the process, you know, in the process, you, you, you learn other things. Like I said, I was learning how to learn. I was learning how to teach. Being a good bass player, being a good teacher, and I think I'm a pretty good teacher, um, I think that I still have a lot to learn, most of that. But, you know, being a good bass player and being a good teacher, two totally different things. They're, they're different skills, right? So, but I'm thinking I'm trying to get this. But there's all that other stuff in between that starts branching off, branching off. So maybe you're there in your life. Um, maybe you were there in your life and you maybe need to be reminded again. But I hope this video has been an encouragement. I am not going to let this go to 30 minutes. So, as always, I just feel like it's I force a habit. I feel like I have to say, um, if you like this channel and, and you think that somebody will find the stuff I say helpful, go on and subscribe. Um, my website, all that information is here on the YouTube channel. And yeah, I hope to meet you in person one day. And if I don't, hit me up, email me, send me a message or something and say hello. I'll say hello back. I promise. All right. So, till next video, look, 24, 24, 7, I, I should just let it go to 30 minutes. I'm not going to do that. All right. I'll see you in the next video, which will be much shorter. And uh, again, hope somebody enjoyed this and found it encouraging. All right.